Hi, I'm Sara and I'm an Education and Volunteer Specialist for Manatee County. Today I'm here at Robinson Preserve to talk about insects. Insects are members of a class defined by six legs and three body segments, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Insects are very important to the environment. They provide many essential ecosystem services, such as decomposition, food source, pest management, dispersal agent, and the most well-known, pollination. When we think of pollinators, we usually think of the honeybee, but the honeybee is actually from Europe. That's why it's called the European honeybee. Honeybees only do 30% of the pollination here in Florida. 70% of our wild plants are actually pollinated by native pollinators such as bees, wasps, beetles, flies, uh, and other native pollinators. But how do we know all this information? Entomologists are the scientists that study insects. They take a closer look at a bug's life by sampling and collecting insects. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can collect insects and explore your own backyard. Every good entomologist needs a place to be able to record their observations. So today we're going to be making a insect journal. So to do that, you're going to need some construction paper, a stapler, some scissors, and some coloring utensils so that you can decorate your insect journal. So you're going to take three pages or more if you like of construction paper. And I'm going to fold them in half so I can cut them in a nice straight line. Got all our paper, I'm going to stack them up and fold them into a booklet, just like this. Now to make our binder, I'm gonna fold them in half and I'm gonna staple, staple the middle. And now we have our beautiful insect journal that you're free to decorate however you like. I decided to decorate mine with a beautiful butterfly and some milkweed flowers. The first method of collection is active collection. In active collection, you can use tools like a net, some forceps, or even a spoon to pick up insects. So I'm going to use my net and I'm going to sweep it across plants to see if I can catch any bugs. Close it up. Now you can use something like this cage or a jar to collect all the bugs that you caught inside your neck. The second type of collecting is passive collecting. Passive collecting is used to find insects that are hard to catch, like those very small ones or even those that crawl inside the leaf litter or soil. Today we're going to be making a fur leaf funnel. Now this is a very special type of trap. You're going to need a one liter bottle or bigger, some scissors, a flashlight, some hand sanitizer or alcohol. So to do this, you're going to need a friendly person to help you cut your bottle in half. I already pre-did that. And just like that, it turns into a funnel and a container. So you're going to invert the top and put it inside the container. So the soil will go into our funnel and the bugs are going to fall into our container. But how do we get the bugs to fall in? Well, the first thing you're going to need is some hand sanitizer or alcohol inside your container part. And in case you want to keep your bugs, if you don't, then you can just set your funnel very tightly on top of your container. And then after that, we're gonna take some leaf litter or some soil and put it on the top on the top of our funnel, making sure that it's nice and compact and that not a lot falls into our container. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to see all the insects. Then we're gonna use a flashlight or a lamp as a heat source. So 
all the insects inside the container are going to want to run away from this lamp or heat source and right into our trap at the bottom where we'll have the alcohol hand sanitizer to preserve the bugs that we're going to collect. Another form of passive collecting is to use baits. So today I'm going to use two different types of baits to attract some ants. So we're gonna have our index top cards and I'm gonna label them with numbers so I know which bait I use and which one. And I'm going to set them in opposite directions but from equal distances from each other. So we can find out what type of baits the ant likes better. We can also see what type of ants are in the ground. And there's many different experiments you can do just by setting different baits out and testing out what ants like the best. So let's go down to the nest. My first bait is going to be a mix of tuna and honey. Now it's very important that you get a protein source and a sugar source that's very yummy for ants. So things like cookies that have nuts or peanut butter and honey are really great examples of types of foods that ants would love. So on the other side I just placed some cookie crumbs and we'll see which type of bait the ants prefer. Thank you for joining me today at the Pollinator Garden in Robinson Preserve to learn more about insects and all the things they do for us. Bye!